If you're a gardener east of the Rockies, you know about this pest, the Japanese beetle. It plagues gardens and it feeds on over 300 different types of plants. Now, if you're west of the Rockies, watch out, they might be coming your way. Japanese beetles are tough to control because they love everything. Just let me give you a list of some of the plants that they'll feed on. Apples, plums, cherries, grapes, hollyhocks, potentilla, hibiscus, zinnias, basil, it goes on and on. So if you're growing almost anything in your yard, you probably have Japanese beetles. Now where they're native, of course, in Japan, they're not really a big issue because they have parasitic flies that keep them under control. We've tried to introduce those in the Northeast over the last hundred years, but they really haven't gotten established. So every year you see a lot of these adult beetles flying around. Now the key in controlling Japanese beetles is to know something about their life cycle. Japanese beetles start as C-shaped white grubs in the soil. And in the spring, they slowly move up through the upper levels of the soil till they get to a place, usually early summer, where they'll pupate and then they emerge as this little guy right here that will be flying around feeding on everything. Their whole purpose in life is to eat and mate. What a life! Then they lay eggs all around the plants where they were feeding. The eggs hatch into C-shaped grubs and then they spend the winter in the soil. So the key is to control the grubs. Let me tell you how to do that. The Japanese beetle grubs may be more or less severe depending on the weather. During really cold winters or really dry summers, you're going to have less grubs and therefore less beetles. But you can also enhance that effect too with two organic controls. One is called beneficial nematodes, just like this product I have right here. This one's called Nemoglobe. Nematodes are microscopic little wireworm-like creatures that use water channels in the soil to go on a seek and destroy mission and actually parasitize the grubs. You would want to spray these on your lawn areas in May or June and then maybe again in September because that's when the grubs are most likely to be on those upper level surfaces and that's how they can find them and kill them. The key with this, of course, is to water the soil really well. That's how they move around is through water channels. So do it right after a rain or water them in early and then afterwards, after you spray them, to keep it nice and moist. They'll really reduce the population so you have less adult beetles later on in the summer. Another product you can use is milky spore powder. This one, it works well in warmer areas because it overwinters in the soil, unlike the nematodes that you have to spray every year. The milky spore powder is a powder that will live in the soil and kill those grubs when it comes in contact with them. So both of these products will be really nice to control those grubs and reduce the overall Japanese beetle population. So spraying nematodes or milky spore powder is a great way to reduce the grubs and especially around the plants where they're feeding because that's what Japanese beetles do. They'll lay their eggs around where they feed. But what about the adults? I got a nice idea for you. Japanese beetles don't like soapy water. So what you can do is early in the morning when they're still sluggish is go over to the plant and just knock them into the soapy water. Just by rustling the plant, they'll, the response is to just drop right into the water and that'll kill them. Of course, you can crunch them too and you can hire a local kid to come over and pay for their first year of college tuition by paying them a dollar a beetle. No, not that much. But this is a good way to come out every morning and religiously reduce that population of Japanese beetles. Now, another thing you could do to control Japanese beetle adults is to use the Japanese beetle trap. You've all probably seen these out in yards. Now, a lot of these traps have a bad reputation because people think that they attract more beetles than they actually control. But the key is to use them correctly. What you want to do with the Japanese beetles traps is keep them 100 to 200 feet away from your garden. And ideally have about three or four of them per half acre lot so that you have a perimeter control of the Japanese beetles as they fly in. Also, keep them low to the ground because that's the cruising altitude of Japanese beetles. A foot or two off the ground is ideal with these. When they're that far away, what they'll do is with this pheromone, they'll lure the Japanese beetle in, they drop into the trap and you kill them. Now, if you put them too close to the garden, they're gonna go after your plants and not the trap and you get more damage. But you can see how effective this is when you look inside and you'll just see a whole bag or a whole container filled with dead Japanese beetles. There are sprays that you can use to control Japanese beetles. I'm an organic gardener, so I stay away from the chemical sprays, which certainly are effective. But even in the organic world, certain broad spectrum sprays like pyrethrum and rotenone are not that great to be used because they can kill honeybees as well. But there is one spray that I've used if you don't mind your plants looking a little whitish. It's called kaolin clay. This is a fine potter's clay that you spray on the leaves of grapes or fruit trees. And what it does is create a dusty film like you could see here on these leaves and the Japanese beetles don't like to land on it or feed on those leaves. So if you're controlling the grubs in the soil, you're hand picking them using traps or even some of these sprays, these are all great ways to control Japanese beetles in your yard. 
If you want more gardening information, go to gardeningwithcharlie.com.